Good afternoon, everyone. In today's video, I'd like to talk about not only the results of our updated scalper volatility box models, but we'll also use the cumulative tick indicator below to try and see if that gives us any clues. Now, over the weekend, we had a couple different updates, right? This was a fairly busy weekend for us. The first was we had our next How To Think Script episode. This was episode 21, the cumulative tick indicator. There's a free version available for everyone. And for our volatility box members, we have the pro version along with what, about 75 extra minutes of content uh, available at cumulative tick pro. Uh, and so that's what's plotted down below. And then we also had the volatility box models updated. This is our bread and butter indicator. And I updated these models based off of what I believe to be the volatility that we're going to continue to see. Now, early on in the morning, it really looked like that may have been a pretty hasty update with a true test of patience. But I think it's important to remember, which everyone has talked about this, it's the idea that really to be a successful trader, more times than not, you need to stop over trading, be a bit more patient, wait for that perfect opportunity to strike. And whenever that opportunity does come, we're able to take advantage of that. So that's exactly what happened to day with the indice markets along with some non indice markets as well, which is what we're going to talk about. Now let's collapse this starting with the S&P futures first. In the first hour, we didn't breach the scalper volatility box entry line, which again gave us the confidence that the scalper models were the ones that we could use to trade the rest of the day. Now, as the day progressed, we really saw a whole lot of chop. And if we take a look to see what our tick indicator was telling us as well, we saw really a positive tick, right? The cyan overbearing line. But we also saw that for the most part, we didn't have any signs of a trending market. We weren't in any sort of chop zone, really just a very choppy sort of tick action there, right? No, no real edge yet. So now in the 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific hour, we see that we had price action start to fall, and this was not only in the S&P, but across the board in the other indices as well. Now, before we talk about the volatility box zones here, if we take a look at the tick in that same period, you'll see that our cumulative tick for the most part really stayed flat to moving sideways. Again, instead of giving you that notion that the tick is starting to decline, and we're going to see a much deeper pullback here, right? So we saw not only our tick moving sideways, our cumulative tick, but then we also saw that price action fell perfectly. This is about as per perfect of a zone that you can get into our volatility box sign entry lines. This was off of the scalper, the most aggressive models. And we're ready again, in case we do see that doomsday sort of move, we're ready this time for that move to actually take place. So whatever volatility hits our charts, we're ready to trade that. Now, in the case of the S&P, we saw price action fell perfectly into that tick and then bounced from there. To give you an idea of what that bounce looked like, that was about 12, 12.5 points on the S&P futures, fell just a little bit short of that T2 line, but still a fairly nice bounce. Now, typically, we're looking for our, a breach of our volatility box lines along with an edge signal. Uh, and for all of our volatility box members, this is something that I think is going to help us to be a bit more aggressive. I know a lot of us have been waiting. We see the edge signal come in, never get that retest of the cyan line, or oftentimes you see the edge signal come in and then price action just starts to run away. I think the cumulative tick here is going to be a really useful way to try and use internals to gauge when we should be participating in more aggressive pullbacks, whether that's either via the ETF option micro futures or the full size futures for those of you that have account sizes that can handle that so now and that was our first trade or the first breach rather in the S&P futures keep fast forwarding into the close here you'll notice we had one more price action breach of our volatility box lines and again if you trade after hours this was about as picture perfect of a trade as you could ask for right you were able to time that 3 p.m. open where from the 3 p.m. open from our zones you had confidence that you expected the markets to start to move up higher and so far we're up right around 9.5 10% points right something of that sort now if i switch gears we come into the nasdaq here the nasdaq should look a little bit different the nasdaq in that same 10 to 11 a.m hour fell a little bit deeper this time we went into our clouds we still held our clouds which is pretty nice to see right so the update that we had over the weekend did end up working and giving us an edge here then we saw price action again give us that edge signal and from the edge signal again price action started to move now one more time if we take a look at the tick here the tick in this case is adapted to uh, the nasdaq tick you'll see one more time we're still chopping sideways even outside of the extreme zones keep in mind the extreme zones on the nasdaq aren't really adapted right but the the whole idea here that we're taking a look to see is Instead of seeing the ticks really give a sharp reversal where you start to break down below zero, even start to have a negative slope, you still see a positive slope for the most part. Maybe it's slight marginal negative slope here, but for all intents and purposes, I would argue that this is much more chopped sideways on the cumulative tick as opposed to seeing what you would expect based off of what price action was doing. So again, giving you the confidence that the internals are not supporting the price action move that we currently see. Again, some sort of a divergence happening there, which means we have an edge. And so here, one more time, 
you see the same sort of zones on the scalper are most aggressive models, giving you an opportunity to catch the fade in the NASDAQ futures. For those of you, again, that don't trade futures, you can use the cues here uh, as a means. And we had a question today come in as to which uh, option strike would you choose here. The whole idea starts to become layering in the Q charts uh, instead of the S&P, using really an eyeball approach here, looking at the beginning of the hour, noticing that, hey, it's this pivot point, and using this strike, this out-of-the-money strike, when we're falling deep in to try and play moves where you're playing out of the money options, which give you a better way to try and skew the risk reward in your favor. May have glazed you that a little quicker. If there's more interest around using options with the futures volatility box, just either comment or send us a private email and I can cover that in future videos along with give you a better explanation. Now, moving on to the Dow here. The Dow, again, same 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific hour. You see, we breached the cyan line basically to a T here. This was really the running theme. It was how precise the models ended up being today, uh, especially in that 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific hour on the indices. And then in that uh, close hour with the, the 3 p.m. open, for the indices as well, where for those of you that trade after hours, that gives you yet another angle to try and participate. Now moving on to the Russell. The Russell here in that 10 to 11 a.m. hour, no breach, right? A little bit different, so you already know which markets are more volatile than the others. And now if we switch gears to the other market that triggered, so that's uh, the, the natural gas futures, I'll load in our aggressive volatility box, and in the natural gas futures, we saw a pretty sharp decline here, right? So from 8 a.m., 8.30-ish, all the way down to right around 10.30, you saw that the natural gas futures dropped close to 3%, a little bit more than 3%. Now, in that move, that's where our opportunity set up. So the first trade breach that we had was this breach of the cyan line towards the edge of the hour in the 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific. Don't really care for edge of hour trades, but it was pretty nice to see a really nice reversal from that point. And that reversal, again, led us into the aggressive short here in natural gas futures, which while it was just a wick, still gave you that same target as well. So in all of these cases today, the running theme was the models were almost too accurate, where we saw just down to a tick, we hit the cyan line and being a bit more aggressive today paid off uh, and that's where using the cumulative tick using uh, the edge signal in the case of natural gas where we don't necessarily have something like the tick helps to try and time some of these moves and still part, uh, participate in them in ways that make sense you can use either the ETF options if you're looking for ways to be a bit more uh, conservative in terms of managing risk or even the micros wherever we have them available to try and participate in some of these moves and then finally to conclude this video I just like to make sure that I again make everyone aware that we released the latest tutorial here. It's the cumulative tick uh, indicator tutorial. If you'd like to add this to your chart, it's about 21 minutes. And in less than 21 minutes, we go through the entire coding process to build this indicator. And then for all of our volatility box members, you can just add a pro at the end of this cumulative tick pro, and you'll have access to this page where you can see part two, which is about 75 minutes of extra content where we build that pro version. We go through some Python code. We use a lot of data analysis to try and find extreme zones, reversal periods, uh, and then really just start to document these patterns into the pro indicator. All right, hope this video helps. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading the rest of this week. For all of our volatility box members, we're going to keep a close eye again on our futures volatility box model. Same with the stock. Make any updates as necessary even midweek this time uh, based off of the volatility that we see in the markets. All right, take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.